Hi everyone, uh, Chris Manion here with Sonar Talent and uh, today I'm going to walk through the third iteration of our capacity modeling uh, template. So this is for anyone who uh, is trying to build a recruiting capacity plan in order to hit certain hiring goals. Uh, and so to uh, generate this plan, you're going to need to have some historic hiring results uh, based on your team and uh, recruiter allocation and also a rough forecast of how you expect headcount to grow uh, in the coming year and what that means for your recruiting team. Uh, so in addition to the total headcount, it's also good to understand the attrition so that you can actually get a good perspective on how many hires you need to make. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we've actually used a quarterly grouping, um, which is generally a, a good one to use um, as it gives you enough volume to um, actually make some meaningful uh, estimates, but actually it gives you more of a granular seasonality uh, perspective as well, when you know that certain quarters, you're gonna see more recruited in some areas than, than others. And so without further ado, I'm gonna jump straight back into it. Um, but if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments uh, below. I'm gonna try and answer anything. I'm gonna to link to the uh, template below, which you can copy and use to your heart's desire. It's uh, you know, completely open source. Um, and then I would love any feedback on what you think's missing or what could be improved as we continue and think about version four of this, uh, this template moving forward. So um, I'm gonna share my screen and show you how I think about capacity planning based on the experience that, that uh, I've gotten actually doing this at a large scale over two or three years, um, but also with all the research from uh, many other leaders in the space um, that actually have done some things better that, that, than I have. Uh, so this is really a combination of, of learnings over the last few years. Um, so we start with historical hires. That's a really important place to start because um, what you need to do is understand what what hiring results did you make uh, historically and how were they attributed across the team? Uh, so the first thing to think about is how do you actually want to attribute them to your team? And so here I've used an example of actually breaking down into two different geos. So you have the United States, you have Europe, and then actually into different uh, groups within those geos. Um, and so this will be based on the, the overall volume and um, if you have very low volume, you might just want to group everyone together. Uh, but for the purposes of, of this demonstration, we've got you know, over 300 hires um, per quarter. So you have you know almost 1,500 hires over the course of the year. Uh, and we've broken them down into um, several different groups within the United States and then just two in Europe, uh, given that the volume is overall, overall lower. Um, so you can see this is, a, I think, a natural breakdown for what would be maybe a large e-commerce company, which is where my experience comes from. So you may have a business team, uh, one that's recruiting for more technical roles, uh, executive recruiting, which is generally lower volume, uh, sales and operations, which is generally high volume, and then university recruiting, which actually works on a different timeline, uh, but is generally high volume and, uh, and batch, uh, batch hiring. So uh, that's how I would think about breaking down in this example, use whatever whatever you like. Um, but what's really important to, uh, to do once you have that breakdown is to then start to attribute how your recruiters have spent their time. And it's important to attribute the input and not the output here, because what we're trying to do is estimate productivity. And so you wanna estimate how much time did they actually spend supporting these different groups. And so in this example, and you can read through in the template, we have 20 different recruiters. And what I've done is assign them um, to different teams uh, based on their geo. And so you'll see most of them are actually split between two teams. And for part of the year, it may be a 50-50 split. For the part of the year, it may be a 40-60 split. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but just figure out what is the, like, the overall volume of time they spent supporting those teams. And you'll see why that's important in just a second. Um, and once you've got that, um, that kind of model built out, you know how the attribution worked. Um, you can then also start to think about if you had some recruiters leave halfway through the year, um, you can actually balance their attribution out and the people that maybe started, you can actually think about on ramps. And so maybe this um, this doesn't add up to one, maybe adds up to 0.75 or 0.6, depending on when people joined and, and the kind of on ramp, it can get very complicated, but I've tried to keep it very simple for this demonstration. So once you've got the attribution, we're going to calculate historical performance. And this is a really good estimate for what the future performance is likely to look like. And so um, we start again with our historical highs. You can see that this is just um, read directly from the first tab. Um, so this is step two in the process. Um, but what we're essentially doing here is allocating recruiters um, overall uh, 
heads to the different teams. And so you can see here, I've used a pivot table to actually do this. You can actually do this manually, um, but I was trying to save a little bit of time. And if you can use pivot tables, it's always fun to, uh, to play around with that. Um, but what you can see is that we actually have the number of recruiters that we actually attributed to each team over the course of the year um, by quarter. And so you can see um, that the business team is higher in Q3, lower in Q4, and then steady Q1 and Q2. Um, the university recruiting team is maybe a little, a little misbalanced as well. Um, but the, the most important thing here is to know that the overall attribution should be <clears throat> the number of recruiters that you had working within that quarter. And so we've assumed that no one's leaving, no one's joining, just to keep it simple, but we have 20 recruiters each quarter, but the attribution is gonna vary based on the type of work um, that, that the team would, was doing. Um, and then the, the next stage is really simple. You just divide the total number of hires by the recruiter attribution to give you your hires per recruiter per quarter. And so you can see um, that if we were to just use the average all in uh, number of recruiters divided by number of hires, um, it's going to be pretty high in the kind of like 15 to 20 range um, per quarter. But that's comparing executive recruiting, which maybe would only hire um, you know one to two people a quarter with sales and ops and university recruiting, which actually, you know, each recruiter is going to be hiring, you know, 10 to 20 people per month. And so, this breakdown gives you that granularity that you can actually make some reasonable assumptions based on what you know about um, different performance. But this gives us our historic highest per recruiter um, that we're then going to use to estimate what we're going to need uh, for the coming um, the coming year. And so um, what we're going to do is move on to step three, which is uh, actually projecting that recruiter capacity to the next year. And so again, you can see um, that we're actually looking at the overall number of hires um, that we're expecting to make uh, in 2023. So this actually should say 2023. I'm going to make this adjustment now. Um, but what we've done here is actually assumed roughly a 25% uh, increase in hiring year over year. So you know, fast growing company would probably want to uh, probably want to see that. And when you think about attrition as well, um, you could actually you know, reasonably believe that 25% is a, is a good amount. Um, if the company is actually shrinking in size, you can actually make this a negative number, but you're still gonna have to account for attrition. So maybe you just backfill in attrition or 50% of attrition. Um, however you're planning your headcount, just goes into this model to give you your total number of hires uh, by, by team, by quarter uh, for the coming year. And I'm gonna make these adjustments uh, to all of these cells after, the, after this stream. Um, so once you've got the highest by quarter, you can then look at the productivity. And this is, again, read directly from step two. So we don't need to do any more work here. We're just um, reading this directly in and uh, simply dividing the, um, uh, sorry, uh, dividing the total number of hires that need to be made bit by the recruiting productivity will actually give you the total number of recruiters that you need to allocate for that quarter. Uh, and so this would be a single head. You've seen, you can see here that we've actually rounded the numbers off. Um, this is just to give us a full estimate of the overall number of recruiters. What you can see is because of the way that this works out is that um, the actual increase in recruiting headcount is greater than the increase in total number of hires, uh, which if you've ever grown a recruiting team, you might actually, believe that's a reasonable assumption to make. So we're going from 20 recruiters up to 26, peak at 28, and then back down to 27. Um, but what that's gonna do is ensure if we have that number of recruiters, we should be able to hit our hiring goals based on what we know about recruiting productivity from the previous year. Uh, and it'll give us a breakdown by team. Um, and so this is our recruiting allocation, not necessarily the total number of recruiters that we, uh, we need to assign to the team. And so the final stage is actually to go in and look at how we're going to allocate those recruiters. So um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see the whole allocation. So in this situation, I've actually um, shown 28 recruiters. So we have our 20 core recruiters here and then eight new hires that we know we'll have to make in order to hit that 28 uh, number. And um, to make it really easy, I've just assigned um, 100% of a recruiter's time to that team so that we can actually get the attribution. Um, now, this, this may look a little more complicated, but essentially all we're doing here is um, showing how many how many recruiters we've attributed and what capacity we need um, based on 
what we calculated in this table at the bottom here. Uh, and then that gives us the gap um, based on how many like under or over we are. I use pretty simple um, conditional formatting for these. So it's green if we're, uh, if we're looking good and we're going to achieve our, our goal. It's red if we're under allocated based on that. So um, you know, if I take two of these people away, you can see that now we've actually muted five recruiters, but we actually need six, so we're one under. So let's put those back on. Um, and so just give you that, that capability to, to kind of flex around. Um, if you're comfortable with Excel um, and you want to play around with this even more, you can use a tool, it's, it's a plugin called Solver, uh, and you can set this up and actually have um, the, uh, uh, the the model calculate how many recruiters to allocate based on teams. So it gets a lot more complicated because then you have to think about specialization and uh, time allocation by quarter and how capacity is going to change. So. Um, I would encourage you to play with that if you uh, if you feel comfortable. But to keep it really simple, I haven't really uh, uh, gone into depth on on that side of things for now. Um, and so that was that's pretty much it. So I'm going to share the uh, the capacity model down below. Uh, I'm going to jump into the comments. Uh, this is a pre-recorded stream, so uh, I'll be live when this uh, when this is broadcast to answer any questions that, that you may have. Um, but really excited to. Uh, here, if this is helpful and uh, for anyone that uses it, let me know how it goes. Um, and I hope to, uh, to catch up soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.